This video will give you a quick overview of DeltaThink's open access data and analytics tool. This tool provides a comprehensive roundup of the open access landscape by combining public data sources, private data sources, and our expert analysis. The tool's coverage includes a deep dive into article processing charges, which includes data on over 14,000 journals, cross-reference with measures of impact. You can also analyze the data so you can see averages and popular price points within the marketplace. We have a comprehensive roundup of business models, which brings together basic definitions with lots of specific examples of what various publishers are doing. Our funding section provides data on 40 countries spend on R&D over the last few years, so you can see how these macro trends might influence scholarly output. Our mandates and licenses section provides coverage of the various licenses in use and also allows you to compare how various publishers' offerings meet funders' policies and mandates. We have a deep dive into mega journals, which are of course an important part of the open access market. The data here allow you to track their growth over time and see how they are influencing the marketplace. Our sections on open access books and on repositories round up various public data sources here so you can see patterns in the marketplace, such as how these things are growing over time, use of various licenses, how they break down by subject and geography. Our market sizing and dynamics section provides comprehensive analysis as to what's really going on in the open access marketplace. It combines things such as counts in total articles, articles in open access journals, articles in hybrid journals, with the ability to dice and slice this data so you can see the appetite for open access by subject. And we've also corrected the usually lagging market indicators with our own aggregated private publishers surveys so you can get a really up-to-date view on what's going on in the marketplace and the uptake of open access. Finally, we round up all the sources we use into a list which you can use as a jumping off point for your own research. And we also assemble some checklists of very practical advice for implementing open access activities. So let's take a quick look at our article processing charges section. At the top level, we start with our summary analysis of all the data within the section. This gives you a quick overview of the key takeaways and key pieces of analyses, which means that if you don't want to dive into the data yourself, you have a ready report on what's going on within it. We will also, in this top page, try and provide a key chart that will really summarize what's going on across the whole section's data. So in this case, we're looking at typical maximum and minimum prices charged by a sample of publishers. However, as we dive into this section, we'll actually see that we have a lot more information. So for example, here we can see how measures of impact might be related to article processing charges, which is what this chart is showing. We use here the source normalized impact per paper as a subject neutral proxy for the journal impact factor. All of our charts are interactive, so here we can see by moving our mouse over what this outline might be. We can control it out by a simple drag of the mouse and the chart will redraw in real time. And we can then can also start to interpret the pattern of the dots. So for example, here we can see that fully open access journals on the whole are cheaper than their hybrid cousins. And we can also see that there's very little relationship between price and measures of impact, as we can see lots of dots clustered in the bottom right of the chart, suggesting high prices for relatively low levels of impact. Because we cross-reference all this data, we can start to drill into it. So for example, if we wanted to see what was going on in arts, humanities, and social sciences, we can drill down to that particular subset of the data, a couple of clicks of the mouse, and the chart will redraw to show us what the patterns will look like for that particular slice of it. We have various visualizations for our various data sets. So for example, in this section, we can bundle up all the dots above and see how those patterns look at a per publisher level. And again, we can start to dice and slice the chart to see different patterns within that data. Here we're beginning, for example, to color code by publisher rather than business model. And we could start to drill into various aspects of the data as it might suit us. 
Our market sizing and dynamic section provides a very comprehensive and in-depth overview of the uptake of open access. To give you just a couple of highlights, articles in fully open access journals are clearly of interest to most people who are looking at the open access marketplace. We'll round up the various different data sources. Here we're showing just a few of them. Web of Science, I think, will be familiar to most. Simago so is a public version of the Scopus data. Uh, the Open Access Scholarly Publishers Association also releases data contributed by its members. So you can see how these are tracking over time. You'll also notice that a lot of these indicators are lagging. In other words, they appear to flatten off in recent years. And really, that's just a reflection of how long it takes them to gather their data. So we run an annual survey of publishers. They can tell us what they're actually doing, and we can then aggregate their data points to form correction factors and so correct the public indexes. And that's what you're seeing with the green line here. And we think that enables you to get a much better view uh, and probably much a, a more recent view of what's going on in the marketplace. As with all of our sections, we'll take the data and allow you to form different analyses on it. So this rather complicated picture here, for example, is showing how growth in numbers of articles in fully open access journals is tracking over time. And again, we will provide a correction of the various data sources. Also in our market sizing and dynamics section, we allow you to dice and slice by subject. This rather complicated chart is giving an indication of the appetite for open access in various disciplines across various subjects. The yellow bars are showing the proportion of that subject's output that is accounted for by open access. We look at both the numbers of journals and the number of articles within them. And then you can also set this data in the context of the marketplace by seeing how much of the total market those subjects account for. In this particular area, you can also dive into different subjects. So for example, with a couple of clicks of the mouse, we can see what's happening within a particular discipline and get to quite a nuanced view of overall appetite for open access in the marketplace. The tool is produced by DeltaThink, an independent publishing and digital media consultancy with a reputation for delivering unbiased and practical information to the scholarly communications community since 2005. If you'd like to know more, please get in touch with us at the address shown on screen.